What's up, everybody? You're listening to This Can Make Us Famous podcast. I'm your host, Jason McCormick. Welcome back for all those that have been staying tuned to all of our previous podcasts. With me in the studio is my trusty sidekick, Mr. Charlie Bartha. What's up, Charlie? Hey, everyone. Woo! We got a lot to cover today, so fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be crazy. Sit back and listen and watch whatever you're doing. <laughs> Never going to financially recover from this. I've been waiting to use that one. So, if you guys notice something, <coughs> excuse me, my hair. Jason got a I haircut. I got my haircut. Jason got um, a haircut. So, okay. I was my temperature taken. And my temperature taken so I can get a haircut. Um, so I been I've been trying to grow my hair out really long so I can put it up in a man bun. And I always get to this point where it's just shaggy and it looks horrible and it's hot. And so I finally was like, you know what? I gotta get this hair removed from my head. However, I have a misshapen head and I'm apparently hideous. So I'm trying to figure out something to help take away from my hideousness. And so I came up with this hairstyle, which is a medium length. And so uh, my wife loves it, which is all that matters. <laughs> uh, so I got my hair cut. And then uh, when I got there, um, they, they, told, they asked me if I knew anybody that was struggling or had this virus or um, had symptoms of the virus. And they um, had me wear a mask. And then they made me... Um, they, they, it was so weird. It was just, it, it, you kind of feel violated, but you know, you just kind of roll with it cause you need a haircut. So they take the, the little temperature gauge and shoot it at your head. And it's just such a weird thing to have a random person. You don't even know who they are. And they're just holding a gun up to your head and a gun. Well, like a temperature <laughs> gun. It might as well be a gun. That's how it feels. I feel like they're going to just bust a cap in your head, but they're just checking your temperature. So I go. Was it a Ruger 93? It was, actually. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if that's a gun. but Wouldn't that be weird if Smith & Wesson made a uh, temperature gun? Temperature gun. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it was good. Good experience other than that. Got it done. And, uh, yeah, I feel much better, actually, with a nice haircut. Um, and I still need to shave a little bit. But um, And then I've been working on my diet. Now, now he only has to stay in front of the mirror for 10 minutes, not... 25. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and so uh, I've been working on my diet. There's this app. Um, I don't even remember what it's called. I don't even know if I can even talk about this app. I'm still, oh, lose it. Lose called, it, lose it, lose it. It's called, don't you have to pay for that one? Uh, eventually. Right now I'm on the free trial. But honestly, I think I like it better than the um, Under Armour one. Uh, it has better reviews and it's nice. I like how the layout of it. Yeah, but Under Armour usually gives you a discounts for clothing and stuff. I don't wear Under Armour stuff, though. So I, I'm uh, really happy with that. So far, okay, so I started a week ago using this app, about a week ago, not quite. And I've, I was 230 pounds, and now... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever so and then i weighed myself this morning and i was 221 so that's pretty good wow where'd it go oh uh, I've just i found been... it <laughs> well i uh i found it it's right here you found it <laughs> yeah I, I got it i gobbled it up um <clears throat> so um yeah so i'm losing weight and it's working good i'm just counting my calories basically other apps do the same thing, but you can scan uh, different foods that have barcodes and it, it automatically loads it up. And right now, I, apparently men, they're uh, required or they have a, a limit of 2,500 calories per day. And I'm under two 2,000 calories. So I've been doing that consistently each day. And it's been pretty good. Been pretty good. I've been losing the weight. And so that's the goal. And then... Um, Earlier, um, I've, I don't know if I mentioned this on other podcasts, but uh, I was doing this thing uh, called Ancestry DNA. I did that probably about four years ago. I just wanted to find out some history uh, in my genetics and uh, because I'm adopted. 
And it was pretty cool. Wouldn't that be creepy if I came back and said we were related? Oh, that would really be weird. <laughs> like you were my father. Like <laughs> what? Jason, I oh am your father. <laughs> oh my god. Uh so yeah, so I, I did that. It's a pretty cool app. It it uh explains everything to you, shows you different areas where you're from and like different regions and the history on your family. Um, even connects you with ancestors or different people within your family that share DNA with you. And this other feature they have, which is what I really wanted to talk about, was their health, uh, ancestry health. And I, I happened to do that uh, because I was curious. I wanted to see, you know, in my genetics, what kind of things am I prone to, are susceptible to. And uh, uh, one of the things I have is what is it called? Something thrombophilia. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds really messed up, but anyways, long story short, that whatever that was, that word is, uh, it's, um, uh, it, my blood can clot easy or easier than the average person. Um, uh, well, that's what it says, but it's not like a guarantee that I got it. And then it also says that, um, I'm sensitive to bitter stuff or I may not be sensitive to bitter stuff. Oh, that's why he took the sour challenge pretty good. Yeah. And then also it says I can't smell. Uh, there's something in in asparagus that makes, you know, you could smell that. So like when you pee, you know how people say, you know, asparagus, it smells when you pee after you ate asparagus? Well, I can't smell that, and I can't. Mm. So... So you're telling me you've been going around smelling people's pee? Uh, well, that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, did you go to the bathroom and pee? Because uh, I'd like to take a whiff of it. Okay. By the way, did you eat asparagus? Because uh, I can't smell that. Not at uh, all. You can. Uh, you can see when when someone I. And very close to urinates. Um, you can see it. You can see the where she's lacking in protein or has too much protein. You can tell. Wow. You hear that? Whoever this woman is, who I probably know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> now the whole world knows about it. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, right now I'm trying to. Oh, and th- one thing I did see was uh, male hair loss. And to my horror... Yeah, you or your close male relatives have a high chance of hair loss. Oh. That freaking sucks, man. And my hair's thin, so I don't... The problem is I don't have a nice shaped head, okay? I look like a deformed Gandhi with my head shaved because I did it one time. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. Buzz my hair off. It's horrible. I looked like some creature from another <laughs> plant. It was just horrible. So I'm not going to do well if I bald, so I'll wear hats. Did Ancestry.com, by the way, say you were like from Area 51? By uh, it did. I have a little bit of Area 51. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so what else do I have? Oh, you're, this one's really cool. You have the sprinter gene. So, uh, so we looked what, at, what's that mean? <laughs> okay. We looked at one gene that plays a role in how your muscles work, but when it comes to athletic ability, DNA is just, so apparently I, I didn't copy the rest, but apparently I have this amazing ability, uh, to run. I have amazing like athletic abilities, Charlie. Run for So I'm going to have to really explain that to my wife, uh, Maybe that's why um, you beat her in that in that race. Yeah, I think it is. Well, I I run so fast that I eventually just I trip over my feet and fall, and yeah, it's quite, trip over your son and or almost tackle my son unintentionally. Yeah. But um, wow, that's that's interesting. Yeah. So ancestry dot com DNA. You guys should check it out. It's pretty sweet. There's wonder, a lot of things. You wonder can what it will say about me. Well, you know, you're what? Are, what do you have in you? You're a Hungarian. I'm, I'm half Hungarian and half uh, English. Yeah, half English. Like any particular part of England or England. 
England, <laughs> just Eng- well, a lot of people come from England, Wales, yeah. uh, and that's what mine, uh, a lot of mine is. No, I don't really know. But it's it's weird how DNA works, though. You think that you because your parent would be fifty percent that, or your parents fool this, and your other parents fool this. Um, really, there's not many people that are full anything. Like most people are mixed with something. A lot of people are full of it. They're full of it. Yeah. That, that, that right there <laughs> deserves that Charlie. Still getting these buttons down, but, uh, yeah. So ancestry DNA. Um, so the other day, this is kind of funny, man. I was looking at, I like to look at different memes. Wait, does that say you're related to Trump? Oh, it does actually. Wow. No, what I was gonna say is I, <laughs> I, I like okay. watching these. Quit uh, reading the prompter. <laughs> I like uh, watching these memes and videos, and Trump puts out some of the craziest stuff ever. I mean, he puts out these tweets, and I think a lot of times that's what gets him in trouble. But dude, this thing was so hilarious. Uh, so. He took that video of those uh, the African men that do the funerals and they dance. I don't even know what it's called, but they, they wear these, these hats. They're all black in the black suit with the white. And they, they do the, uh, the dance with your casket and stuff. And so Trump, I'll have to show a picture of it, but uh, Trump thought it would be a good idea to come up with the – he played a clip of Joe Biden – Maybe I can play it on the uh, video. I'll find out for copyright reasons, but um, it's hilarious. I was like crying watching this, man. I was laughing so hard. But anyways, it showed the uh, Joe Biden and his little uh, deal when he was talking to Charmaine. And he said, uh, if you if you don't vote for me or you don't know if you're for, with me, then you ain't black. And, you know, that caused an outrage in the African-American community, uh, rightfully. And, uh, and so Trump tweeted out that a video clip of that with a video clip of the, those guys carrying a casket that said Biden on it. And uh, they started dancing and running around. And it was just, it, oh, man, it was just hilarious. Hmm. Yeah. He, he is, he's the best with working the internet and using Twitter. Um, I'll be honest, like, it's probably like Trump probably did not create that, but probably someone in his family did. Like maybe his son, Donald Trump Jr., came up with the idea and he just gave it the go ahead. But I don't think he's necessarily capable of that kind of creativity like that. Uh, so um, I thought it was hilarious. Did you see it? Uh uh-uh. uh. You didn't see it? No. It was funny, man. I'll, I'll have to show it. Um, so yeah, he's, he's trying to hold things together. I, <clears throat> I can't imagine being a president during all this stuff going on. And he's had a rough, rough, probably the roughest of any of them all. Yeah. You know, all, all when you get into that high office, you're going to have haters and right, of dis- course. Any dis- leader. dislikers or whatever's you want to call them. Yeah. And you're going to get goofy, like, you know, you see people making fun of his hair and, you know, you see memes all popping up with him in it and everything. You're going to have that. And, but um, this has gone to the, to the total extreme. I mean, ever since before he took office, he's been getting. Well, you got to think about it. Just think about the personality that Trump has. He he just loves people talking about him. So even if it's I, making fun I, of his hair, yeah. the guy's like, I, what the, that's so awesome. They're talking about me. What they don't realize is it fuels the fire inside of him. Inside of him, he gets up every day and yeah. he's like, ah. So you know, I mean, I I think that just makes his day when somebody does that. And then, <laughs> so I am fantastic. Everybody loves me. Loves. They're loves. all talking about me. It's amazing. Fantastic, the best. I should dress up like Trump one day and uh, do a little <laughs> skit, like the, the guys on that show that Emily was watching the other night. Oh my gosh, 
<laughs> yeah, that was like uh, Alice in Wonderland meets uh, The Hunger Games meets uh, Cinderella meets yeah. <laughs> like every yeah. Disney. Yeah, that was crazy. These two guys. <laughs> oh man, people. There's some interesting people out in this world, but it was some British show, and that was they were um, doing flower designs. Yeah, they create flower it was sculpture. Like a, like a like a weekly show, um, and uh, every time they come on, they had different. These two guys had different outfits on that made him look stand out. Let's just put it that way. Right, made him stand out. Mm. I'll leave it at that. Pretty eccentric. Their uh, personalities oh, gosh, um, was more than eccentric. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't realize what was more beautiful, them or the flowers, <laughs> because they looked like the flowers. <laughs> It was amazing. Um, so yeah, we were talking about Trump, and uh, Charlie just went on this rabbit trail about. Uh, that happens quite often. <laughs> Charlie, I just got to quit reading tra- the prompter, I, you know, because I could have swore it said that you were related to Trump. But uh-huh. yeah, you got to get your eyes fixed there, buddy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Trump holding everything together, and uh, I, I just like I said, I couldn't imagine being the leader of a country during all this just chaos it's insane man that's i mean every time i turn on the news there's something new and apparently like uh these officers are being killed um i saw something here about um like police officers just being shot cop shot in the head in one of two police involved shootings in uh las vegas so there's cops shot there uh small town uh, police chief killed as officers three cities wounded during violence at George F- uh, Floyd riots. Um, I mean, dude, I under- see. I understand the the frustration. I understand the tension and why people are upset and they've had enough. And the question is. Is this the right thing to do? Is this the right response? And I would have to say, common sense tells you it's not. What do you think? Well, it is not the right way. It to kill anybody. The, it I is mean. the wrong way. Um, however, when money is involved and you're getting paid, which, call me a conspiracist or whatever you want to call me, these people are getting paid and they're traveling from community to community, city to city, and rioting. Yeah. Um, and they are staged. You can tell me anything you want, but a random pile of bricks showing up in the city. Yeah, pallets of bricks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, man. There's nothing to that. You're just <laughs> overlooking it. It's yeah. there's more to it. There's no big so, deal. I mean, it could have a sign on there it, saying it, it, I mean it was a tragedy. Um I don't think it was I mean it's it's not a racial racist thing because I mean, we're talking there was a a white cop, a black cop. An Asian. An Asian and a Hispanic. Yeah. Um, And truthfully, he had the white guy, he had his knee in the guy's neck, but the the other two cops, one had his foot on his legs and the other one had his foot on his back. Right. Well, the the guy that had his foot on his back was the black one, I believe. And that pressure on the back pushing on his lungs with the condition that supposedly Mr. Floyd had could have caused the same thing as the The tension on the neck. You just don't know. Yeah, and actually that's a good thing. Um, Some people won't hear that because they just want to – they're seeing red. And when you're seeing red, all you – you know, you just – you can't see any other thing, you know. And so um, the point is – George Floyd was murdered yeah. by police officers. Yeah. He, so was, he was definitely, definitely, um, whether the autopsy shows it or not, he was definitely put under strain and under pressure. Which caused the which caused him cardiac arrest. Caused the cardiac arrest. Whether he died on the scene, whether he died at the hospital, it doesn't matter. The poor right. man's dead. Right. So, But that is a good question you asked, Charlie, because... Uh, it, there's a lot. I mean, even though it's it's still at the the hands of police officers and police brutality, um, if it wasn't the guy's knee and the neck that caused it, but the guy um, 
which was a different race, pushing down his knee on the guy's back on his chest when he already had these medical yeah. conditions. Yeah. And the guy, I mean, when someone's on your, like I've had my son when I'm laying flat on the ground, standing on my chest and it's hard to breathe. I can't imagine a full grown man, especially if you had the like health conditions, yep. putting full force on top of you and, and you know, I, what if, what if that is what killed him, even though every single officer that was on that scene is responsible for his death, 100% responsible because they could have stopped it, but it changed it from, so what I'm saying is maybe it wasn't the guy that put his knee on his neck, but the guy that put his knee on the guy's back that killed him. And that changes a lot of things as far as yeah. I mean, there's a lot race of thing. There's a lot of what ifs or could ifs or sure. should ifs or yeah. You know, I mean, the point is, an uh, innocent and, or a man and, died, and you don't know what went on, and um, you know whether he did pass. A, I mean, supposedly he was trying to pass a counterfeit bill, and you know we don't. You know, was it was it counterfeit? Wasn't it counterfeit? I mean, we don't know. Um, that's beside the point. That's doesn't even really matter anymore because right. what he matters, died as a result of what matters is that the poor man's dead. Yeah. And we um, had to all, the whole world had to watch it. Yeah. And, it's, and I mean, it's just a terrible thing, but, uh, I, I truthfully, I don't believe it was a racial thing. Um, I just think that, uh, for whatever reason, I mean, this guy could, I mean, after the fact, this, this, this guy found out his wife's leaving him. Maybe 10 minutes before he showed up on a scene, he got a call from his wife and said, I'm done, we're done. Yeah. You know, so he, instead of it being uh, a racial thing, he's just lost a his, little tense, lost his, <clears throat> his rocker for whatever reason. Yeah. And he happened to take it out on which, by the way, we obviously don't condone what they did. Yeah. yeah. But there's a reason, by any circumstance. There's, there's a reason that people do what they do. And, uh, you know, people that, uh, you know, I've been pulled over by cops that might have been really good people if you knew them outside of, but then they, they seem like douchebags because the way they responded to you and reacted. And you have to kind of move on from that and be like, well, maybe they are just a good person. They're just cranky. Like, I mean, anybody that works has bad days. Like, yeah. their boss got onto them. Uh, they were late. Uh, their kids were causing trouble. I mean, there's just so many scenarios. Yep. So many. Uh, so that causes the tension and so, but the point is like this stuff has got to stop police need there just stuff needs to change with the training yeah, and how they approach situations. And cause no, it, we, it, it's not even training Jason. I mean, you can train because I've trained in riot control with when I was in the military and, um, you can train all you want. Yeah, it's it's just a you know you something could spark and throw you off in a total yeah total ransom. So yeah. I mean, you can train all you want. We can do the best to train these officers the proper way to do these things. Um, whether when they arrive on the scene, do they do that or don't do that? Yeah. Um, maybe training. Well, and also I think, I think it'll have to go back to the hiring process. I think there needs to be, it I, needs to be more strict. Yeah. It needs more strict. I think, I think just because, okay, you've gone through the training. Now you're an officer. I think you realistically need to be, um, every so often brought in for, um, a psych evaluation, a psych, psych evaluation. Yeah. To see how you're handling things, because you know things happen in this world. Yeah, um, these officers could be out on patrol or out in a situation for days before right. they've got relief, mm -hmm. and that puts a lot of strain on your body. Just like the nurses and doctors, same situation. They're under they're under stress. stress and strain when they have to. You know, um, the roads are blocked because of rioters or tension mm -hmm. and uh, their, their relief can't get there. Then they've got to yeah. stay and do what stay they got to do. Well, and then the, the other thing that <clears throat> I think people I mean, for one, we love the police officers. I mean, I've been pulled over and whatever, but they're just doing their job. 
and they save people's lives. So you got to look at the bigger picture. Yes, there are some very bad cops. There's cops that plant drugs in people's cars. There's cops that do horrible things. And there's people still in the force right now that have done stuff that would just blow your mind that are still working in the force that are crooked, wicked cops. Yeah. However, there's very, there's mostly good cops and mostly good uh, law enforcement people and first responders. They're amazing people. They save people's lives. How many people out there can say they've pulled someone from a burning car or uh, did CPR on someone and saved children from drowning. And they, they do yeah. amazing things. They go out there and th- can you imagine like when you put on that uniform, you're a good person and you represent something that's bigger than yourself to serve people. And you know that it could be your last day and people hate you. And, it, and it's, and it's a lot of its leadership too. I'm going to, I'm um, not going to mention names or what city or whatever, but I had a friend whose father was a, um, he actually uh, retired from the being police chief of this city to run, and then he ran for sheriff. Um, And uh, he held very high standards of his officers. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of of places will give you, uh, like gas stations, for example, grocery stores, for example, will give discounts will give free coffee free drinks to the police yeah. he would not allow his officers if they got caught taking as much as a cup of coffee free from an establishment they were fired wow that seems pretty intense but what's his what do you think his reasons for that they're there to do their job right and, and that, not get paid and for not it. to get paid for it yeah so or, or get these perks from special it. yeah perks. Um, I mean, I could see his point of view in that. Um, I think because what they you know these these businesses are offering these things so that they are frequented more often. So that's, that's true. That's not fair. To, well, you'd like to think yeah. you would like to think that they're doing it to uh, serve yeah. their cops, but I may and there's probably. To, to be real, is there's probably co- or uh, businesses out there that actually do it for good. Like they love their their uh, local law enforcement, and they want to bless them. So, but you know, of course, there's those that have other motives behind. Yeah, there's there even even sometimes um, to the point of saying they're blessing them. I think they're still in the back of their head. There's an alternative motive. Yeah, they're using them. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that, yeah, probably a lot of times that that's, is. So That's my, now I'm going to go on a rabbit trail here for a second. That's my opinion on if a company wants to give to a, uh, a company or an organization or a movement or whatever wants to give to a uh a candidate for any mm. office, it should not be tax deductible. If they if they want to give to a candidate yep. of an office, okay. Because that takes away the alternative motive of oh, uh, you know, you know that candidate is going to get paid for, but. Um, they shouldn't be, you know, uh, it shouldn't be, ta- it shouldn't be tax deductible. Any right. contributions that you make to a, a ministry or, a, uh, not necessarily a ministry, but or um, a candidate, a candidate because, you know, um, huh. and I, you know, um, with the, with the new tax bill that, um, Trump put in a couple Charlie years ago. Charlie works at a tax office, by the way. That's why he's bringing this out. Um, it's almost impossible to take your charitable contributions that you make unless they're at a um, unless you have a high because the standard deductions raise so high. Mm-hmm. It's almost impossible to file a Schedule A unless you know. Wow. So unless you own multiple properties that have property tax and you know you give a lot to charity and more important, the worst scenario, they have a lot of medical bills. Wow. Well, I mean, I guess going off of that. Um, you know, with all the writing and the the um, 
the COVID-19 and how we've kind of seem to have moved on from that, you know, talking about taxes, I mean, what do you think is going to happen like economy wise? Cause I'm not hearing too much about it. Cause I'm really focused on what's going on with these riots. I think that's the topic of today. Well, ultimately but, what's going to happen is these people that are rioting for what, you know, whatever reason, I mean, there's, I mean, this, this is just, um, um, over Mr. Mr. Floyd, um, a lot of this is over Mr. Floyd, but people are stepping in with alternative motives to his. Yeah. Um, for him, for what happened to him, and ultimately, what's going to happen is these people aren't seeing ahead; they're just seeing now. So they're doing all these riots and things. These businesses are going to close. People are going to have to go someplace else. They're going to have to pay more money because they're going someplace else. You know, um, they're going to, their insurance rates are going to go up. Right. Because these people are going to be filing these insurance claims. And if you are in the same insurance company they are, basically you're all tied together. So you're, the more claims that are made against that insurance company, your insurance are going to go up. Wow. Well, I mean, I guess if, you know, if you think about it, you know, with, with COVID-19, and the riots together, the the kind of I don't know, just the 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 disaster that it's been to the economy and the uh, the communities around, like these small businesses that heart. Like I was talking to someone today about like the small businesses that barely hung on by a thread during the COVID nineteen lockdown when the riots erupted many of those businesses were devastated. They were destroyed. So whatever was left of them, when they just started to open their doors back up, they get taken out, yeah. completely burnt down and destroyed. And so, um, and they're not, they're not caring what the situation is or who the situation is. I mean, they're just destroying, destroying every business. I mean, whatever it could be black is, Hispanic, white. Yeah, they don't care. They don't what? care who wants it. They're just they're destroying whatever they can destroy and get whatever they can get. And see, that's another reality. You know, theft as it is already is the major reason for prices in stores to be the way they are. Mm. So imagine a situation with that Minneapolis Target and that store completely getting wiped out. How that's going to affect the company, company wide? Million, millions of dollars of product gone. Yeah, millions. I mean, I saw uh, looters like breaking into trains. I mean, come on, dude, a moving train. What happens if you get sucked under that train? You're yeah. toast. You're done. So your life is just gone for what? TV. That this whole train uh, was full of flat screen TVs and you could just uh, see people with like four or five of them in their hands and then people grabbing those out of their hands. This is just, it's just total nonsense, man. I like, I like the, the footage of the, what is it? Louis Vuitton, the purse store. Well, the guys, the guys it. going in there and coming out with purses. <laughs> oh my <laughs> now, God. Granted, you know, if, if they do go to sell them, they're, they're going to, cause it's a popular brand and they're going to, if they don't get caught selling them, they're going to make some some money. But whole it just looked kind of funny with all these guys coming out with whatever purse they could get their hands on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make sure it matches your shoes, brother. <laughs> make sure it matches your shoes. So, yeah, it's uh, everybody's talking about it. Pretty much every podcast is talking about this riot stuff. And, yeah. and I, you know, and, I'm and really... Everybody's in pretty much agreement that the riot is... Writing is not necessary, and it's pretty much in agreement that you know so, the, the the police brutality and the police need to pay pay the price, whether that be you know charges on murder or mm -hmm. um, second degree murder, third degree murder, whatever it might be. Um, yeah. I just don't think the guy got up that morning and said, "Okay, I hate." African-Americans, and the first one I see, I'm going to take down. Yeah. 
So it's not like he intended to right. do that that day. Yeah, just... let's let's be real. <laughs> I know you want to think that that's what he did when he woke up. Like, I'm going to kill a black man today. You know, no, he did not do that. However, it's a situation that escalated and got way out of control. And it ended up with the black man dying because of police brutality yeah. to a human being. And... And I'm telling you, I've seen videos where they did it to white people. I don't know if you saw that one. I think it was a year or two ago. It was very hard to watch, uh, very disturbing. And I can't believe there wasn't riots because of this. This white man that uh, these there was reports that he had a gun. It was I think it was a BB gun. He was in a hotel room. Totally innocent guy. Police storm the building, and they get the guy down on the ground. He has no freaking weapon at all. And he's laying down and he's horrified. And this dude's got an assault rifle on him and he's screaming at him, telling him to do this and that with his body. And the guy couldn't move because he's shaking like he's terrified and he's telling him not to shoot him. And he like and long story short, the cop just unloads the whole clip on him and kills, assassinates the dude. Because he thinks the dude was making a movement to move towards a gun and he could have had a gun. Bull freaking crap. <laughs> and it was a white man. Unbelievable, yeah. dude. Yeah. Destroyed that man. Just And that kind of stuff happens all yeah, the time. It happens all the time. Uh, white, black, Asian, Mexican. So bl- Hispanic, police brutality is uh, a real thing. Russian. I mean, everybody. It, it's, it's, it happens. All the time. And if you don't to, believe me, I could show you hundreds to, of to, videos of that. To anybody. It's just a matter of, you know, um, the media. The yeah. media got a hold of something and, and took, took yeah, it. Yeah, there's a narrative and they yeah. got to spin it. And, yeah. and what works good? What's, what's, the, what's the big story of today? Racism. Okay, we're going to take this story and make it a big racist thing. Yeah. Boom. And look what happened with it. People just eat it up and... They don't even think about it. You yeah. don't. They they know that you're not going to look at facts or not going to look at anything else because they know all you're doing is seeing red and whatever they throw you, whatever rations they feed to you, you're going to take it, run with it, and yeah, exactly. And, so, but, and again, I want to emphasize, and he already emphasized it. We do not condone what happened. No. Um. We hurt just as much as you hurt. Um, what went on? And uh, um, that's I'm, that's all I'm going to say on that. We're 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 not racist. No. We're, well, we're we're not. You know. Well, we're definitely not. And um, I think it's our responsibility, especially being, you know, uh, doing these podcasts and and uh, speaking to the public, um, I think it's our responsibility to look at the full picture mm-hmm. because I'm not going to be like the news trying to push a narrative, trying to push any kind of narrative. I'm open to anything. Like, I'm open to everyone's opinions and views, and that's why I have different guests on yep. that have different points of view. Right. And I love absolutely everybody and their points of view, and I'm not going to try to uh, – bash anyone or point the finger at anyone. Um, now I'm sharing what I consider my opinion and Charlie's opinion on it. Um, that's the whole beauty of this country is freedom of speech. And, but the, the way the, the thing I choose is to love everybody. Even if I can have disagreements or different views on it, I'm not going to like remove someone from my Facebook or remove right. the, uh, this person completely because I don't agree with the topic we talked about. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some, some of my friends, um, cause I, I attended a, a prominently African American church for a while and I got a lot of, a lot of friend, good friendships out of that. And, um, I've seen some postings that, Kind of made me uncomfortable, but that's their, you know, that's the way they um, are stressing how they or emphasizing yeah, how they feel. How they feel. Um, and who am I to say, hey, you can't feel that way. Right. But well, here, I'm going to tell you how I feel. Yeah, and you listen yeah. to how I feel. Yeah. Right. And that's what the world's doing right now. It's like, it's all about me and my opinions. 
And so I, it shouldn't be like that. I look, I'm a conservative Republican. I have strong views in that, but I have quite a few Democrat friends, uh, liberal Democrat friends, people that despise Trump with everything inside them. They hate Trump, but they're my friends. I would sit down with them and have dinner. I would go hang out with them and laugh because there's more to life than politics. Yeah. Like, come on, people. There's more than just politics. I don't even like talking about politics. When I started this podcast, I told Charlie, like, I don't want to just be a, I don't want to talk about politics at all. However, because of the crazy things that are happening, it's very important to use this platform to bring those things up and, and create a conversation and uh, try to, you know, be a solution, you know, to what's going on and see if we can come up with a solution. And, um, and so, yeah, it's just, we need to learn to be able to accept people's differences and, and, and love them. You know, I, I got friends that are gay, uh, that are married and gay and they're amazing people and I love them and I would hang out with them and, you know, and that's, uh, but I will never go and try to preach at anybody or try to tell them, shove my beliefs down their throat. But you know what? I think, imagine if we could sit down with someone that's different yeah. than us. Love on them, love on them, love on them. And they do the same them. to you. Like yeah. they listen to you talk about your point of view. And instead of screaming and yelling and the volume escalating, you have good conversation. And if you get to the end of the conversation, it's like, and if your fi- your face is red and you're foaming out the mouth, then you don't know how to accept people for who they are. And you don't, I mean, it's just, we got to get those things worked out we got to learn to get along because i've said this before there will always be republicans there will always be democrats and libertarians and green party and christians and muslims and jews and everything out there they're always going to be there we got to learn to work together and to be there for one another and and accept one another and you can disagree with certain people's lifestyles and what they do, but you don't have to throw stones at them and hate them or walk away from them. Um, so, but I believe in the approach of peace and love. And, um, I feel sad that, that, um, these people feel like they have to, you know, the writers feel like they have to cause all this chaos to get their voice heard i think it's very sad it they feel like they have to do that and um so where do we go from here i mean what do you think is like how how do we get out of this well i don't i don't know it's just uh, not just get out of it but how do we change this that they're through love love on each other um, I mean, you've heard of the story down in Wichita, Kansas, not two, you know, three, three and a half hours from here, where the riots ended up in a barbecue. Mm-hmm. With the, the cops and the rioters ended up having a barbecue. Yeah. Um, you've seen a situation down in Miami where the, the police got on their knees and, and prayed. Uh, prayed and apologized for the actions of others. Yeah. Other... And even though they're Fellow not the ones officers, that they did. Yep. Yeah. They, I mean, there were, what, Miami to Minneapolis, that's probably... Oh, millions. 24. Uh, probably probably 20. thousands and thousands, not yeah. millions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and, you know, and that's, you got to look at the good. I mean, we see all the bad, negative, terrible stories. We got to look at, we got to look at the, the good ones. You know, we got to look at... Um, all the good stuff going on and around the world, you know, so, yeah. um, there's a lot of chaos going on, but we got to choose to see the good. Yeah. So got to choose to see the good. Um, so yeah, we could talk for hours. Uh, we have almost, <laughs> well, we are at 44 minutes. <laughs> 
most of the time was taken up on Jason and his haircut. So <laughs> I got. I mean, I had to do it. It had to be done. I need mine cut, and I need someplace somewhere. Love where, everyone, everybody. Where I can go that I don't have to wear a mask because I cannot wear a mask. Yeah. I cannot breathe with a mask on. Oh, yeah. Well, it is hard. Um, they need to make scented ones, or like flavored <laughs> ones. You can lick it just like, mm, this one tastes like raspberry. We can like get raspberry. you some scratch and sniff stickers to put inside there. <laughs> Ra- the, what is it? The schnozberries taste like schnozberries. <laughs> All right, what's next? Dingleberries taste like dingleberry. Okay, dingleberry, what's next? Uh, well, <laughs> this is the biggest story of the night. Oh, we don't have much time. <laughs> we don't have much time, but this is the biggest breaking news story. I mean, earth-shattering. This story is just the story of all stories. Kylie Jenner... <laughs> Which is one of the Kardashians, Bruce Jenner, which is Caitlyn Jenner now, uh, his daughter, and she's part of the Kardashian family. Very big deal. The whole world knows the Kardashians and the Jenners. And uh, she has been thought to be a billionaire, uh, or that's what she says. However, this recent news coming out is that she exaggerated her wealth. And it's somewhere under, I believe, nine hundred million dollars. That's sad, Charlie. Oh, that's so I mean, sad. Nine hundred. Uh, I don't know. Why would you? Why would you lie about being a billionaire when you got nine hundred million? I mean, you that's know, only a couple steps away from being a billionaire. You but. know, it, I know it's Kylie. If you're hearing this, I know you're probably watching the show. I feel so bad for you um, that. You're not a billionaire, but you only have about nine hundred million dollars, maybe even eight hundred million. That's could pretty, you swing a couple million this way? It's pretty devastating, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I can't. I couldn't imagine, Charlie. Could you? I mean, going through what she's going through right now. I know. So what's that say underneath that? But she could get jail time. I saw. I saw something talking about that. For lying about being a billionaire. Yeah. Psh- I, but you know how those stories go. I mean, they got all these like big breaking news stories and you read it and and you're like, while you're reading it, you're like, of course, dude, she's not going to go to jail for this. Are you kidding me? How could she go to jail for that? I mean, that's so dumb, man. So anyways, congratulations on being almost a billionaire. I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah. Who cares? There's so many other crazy things going on in this world. And how did she get to be a billionaire? Just from that Kardashian show or what? No. Uh, Kylie Jenner. Well, okay. She have a makeup Ky- line or yes, something? Yes, she does have a makeup line. And I believe she sold it. Or she's like still somewhat in the business. But I think she sold her uh, her line or whatever. Like I think it's called Kylie Cosme. I, I can't remember People people attack me for that, not knowing that. But I don't know much about the Jenners and the Kardashians, except for they're extremely famous. Um, but, yeah, she – but what I have seen about her, Kylie Jenner is brilliant. Like, she's an amazing businesswoman, and um, she built this brand, and, and it made her that wealth, mm. that fortune. So she is an amazing businesswoman. Wow. And um, – all for so. putting animal fat on your face. <laughs> Charlie, okay, so Charlie does not, uh, he's not a fan of makeup and at all on women, so he likes the all natural look, and that's fine. He likes his women to look like men. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> just it's like joking. putting a mask on. I mean, right, no, I see what you mean. Yeah. But I don't, again, I don't, con- just like I don't condone what, you know. The police officers did. I don't condone a woman for wearing makeup. Mm. I might chuckle if it's a little excessive or <laughs> out of you know doesn't blend very well or something like that. It's like they took chuckle, a paint roller and they're yeah. just like. <laughs> oh, we had this girl back up in Michigan that 
she was some something on her face and she looked like she just worked at a paint factory that painted things gold yeah and didn't wear anything on her face because she come in and well, she was all gold wow yeah there's a i feel bad for like how women have to feel like they have to be this certain way to appeal to men and so they do like stuff like that to appeal to men we were very thankful that she got a boyfriend and and I don't know what the conversation was between them, but she toned it down quite a bit. Toned it she down. Got the boyfriend. <laughs> she toned it down. <laughs> you get it? Tone, like toning. Uh, <laughs> oh man, dude, it's so hot up here. Like, yeah. okay, so I have a uh, a portable air condition up here in this attic. If you can't tell, we're in an attic, um, and I had that sucker running for about three or four hours, and it cooled it down just enough that it was tolerable and now it's hot. So like towards the end of the podcast, I'm sweating. Like I feel sticky. Yeah. I, if you, any of my listeners have a solution to our extremely hot attic problem that we are facing right now, um, leave a comment below. Um, and if you're listening on the podcast, I don't think you can leave a comment below. <laughs> Maybe you can. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how uh, that works, actually. Yeah, so so far I have pretty much zero listeners. I did but you can go to the Facebook page and leave. A- yeah, you could. Yeah, this can make us famous on Facebook. I'm going to try to create some other social media uh, links. But uh, anyways, oh, I did earn. Okay, I Charlie doesn't want me to talk about it right now. Uh, so anyways, I uh, earned people's respect. How about I say Because <laughs> I'm doing this and working really hard. Yeah. And we, uh, we we want you to suggest anything and anything. Yeah. Even for Charlie's bag. Comment anyway. Um, you can suggest, you know, like a new tinker thing that you've got as seen on TV and yeah, that works really out. great. You know. Tell us about it. We'll I like the hands on stuff. I mean I, I kind of I don't want this to be the food review place, but I like being able to do hands-on kind of stuff, and that's why we do what's in Charlie's bag. We'll probably do other segments, too. by the way, I I heard this off the press the other night. It's hot off the press. Hot off the press. He got 50 subscribers, so he ate a raw raw onion. onion, yes. I heard... I remember that. ...that when he gets 100... He will repeat eating no. the raw onion. No, 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 no. That's no. what I heard. Wait, we're still, Charlie, the, the listeners are still waiting on you to do your challenge. I buddy. have not heard a listener comment that said, hey, where's Charlie? When um, is he going to do that? I've heard thousands of them. <laughs> they call me. I don't know how they got my phone number, but they call me and they're like, hey, Jason, we got to know when Mo- Charlie's going to do it. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, right. He doesn't want to do it. That, that was brutal, but... Uh, I'll do something crazy, We're st- and I'm still waiting for people to comment from the last podcast about ideas of what challenge I could do yeah. and um, if I get 100 subscribers. So we'll try to work that out. Yep. 100 is the next milestone. Then, 100 then we'll after leave them 500. A, then we'll leave them alone for until 500. Please. And then when he gets a, then if he gets 1,000, then he gets a special treat from a certain company, I guess. Oh yeah, and then thousand subscribers, thousand subscribers, and you get to monetize your channel. So that would be awesome. Even though you won't make anything hardly. I mean, you're. Well, don't they give you like a plaque or something? No, that's a hundred thousand. I thought it was a thousand. They give you a little. No, 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 no. Nope. Mm. I don't. I don't. Yeah, you don't get anything except for monetization. No. But okay. uh, when you hit 100,000 subs, that's when you're really on the map. And that's when you, um, that's when you, can, uh, that's when you get the plaque. I believe it's gold. And so one day I did film a video. If you guys look at the channel, I did a little cell phone video of me talking about this journey of doing the podcast and what I'm hoping for and how I'm excited uh, for the day when I can – do another video, and I have 100,000 subscribers. I know that's a huge, long, long way away. 
Uh, it could be another four or five years before I hit that. But that day will come if I persistent and keep improving the content. And, and the most important part, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. And I won't. I definitely won't. So anyways. Because uh, we like to talk, or he likes to talk more than I do. I really do like to talk, and that's why I think I'm good at this. <laughs> I'm getting better, though. Um, I'm definitely getting better. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs>